Um, Ron, none of this is up to code. Sure it is. It's up to the Swanson code. There's no drainage, doesn't seem to be any ventilation. You've got hazardous chemicals over here. Yeah, which only I'm breathing. It's the same liberty that gives me the right to fart my own car. Are you gonna tell a man <laughs> Well, that I think my shop's to code, car? but yeah, maybe not the Swanson code. Person. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today's a day that I've been looking forward to for quite some time, and that's to give you guys a sneak peek at my new shop. It's just been freshly renovated, so let's go check it out and see what's changed. So as many of you know, I've been working out of one of the bays of my three car garage for quite some time now, and it's actually given me a new respect for some of the old tools that I have forgotten about. If there's anything I've learned in the last few months, it's that tools and the brands that make those tools are not that important. I make pretty much the same product with Ryobi and DeWalt as I do with SawStop and Festool. But regardless, it's time to move on. So let's say goodbye to this temporary shop and check out the new digs. So one of the first things that you'll see when you walk into my new shop is my old shop. This is where I temporarily stored all of my materials as well as most of my tools. And it's in this area where I'll be storing most of my lumber as well as my lawn and garden equipment. And since I have almost every tool outside of my shop, this will be an excellent opportunity to look at every single tool individually to determine whether or not I actually use that tool. And I see a big garage sale, one that I would love to go to in my near future. Prediction, greatest garage sale of all time. But until then, I've got a lot of sorting to do. So let's take a look behind this white wall and get our first glimpse of the new shop. Well, that right there is probably one of my favorite features of this shop, and that's a massive amount of lighting. My goal with this lighting was to eliminate, if not minimize, the use of Tweedledee and Tweedledum, my two shop lights that I carry around with me for every single shot on every single video. And if we look at the shop ceiling, you can see there's 13 LED lights that put out 7,000 lumens per light. Each one of my lights has a double outlet, so if I want to expand my lighting, this can be done with ease. So this video will be my first test on how these lights do without any assistance. If we continue with the ceiling, you can see my main air filtration system, the Jet AFS 2000. And the upgrade with this air filtration system has everything to do with location. It's now directly in the center of the shop versus on the very edge. Now it's still very cold in my shop, but it's not always going to be that way. Let's go take a look at the heat pump as well as the air conditioning system. Now the heat pump's installed and is working, but it's not quite put together yet. This is going to reside in the northeast corner of my shop and all of the air ducts run on the north side. Oh, hey, it's me, Brian from the future. They finally wrapped up that heat pump, so let's go take a closer look. As you can see, the heat pump is all tied up and looks great. One interesting thing I learned about this whole process is they put the thermostat right by the unit, and that's because they want to measure the temperature of the return air. And this is a little bit different placement than what me and my contractor had originally planned, as we were going to put it as far away from the unit as possible. But the HVAC contractor assured us that the proper position was by the unit. But he might have been just lazy, so I'm going to keep an eye on that temperature. Lazy. Now let's send you back to the past. It's Scott. Let's go outside and I'll show you the air conditioner as well. So obviously the air conditioner is located on the exterior of the building, and this is also on the northeast side, and this is a two-ton unit, which my old rooster has assured me will be enough power. <coughs> now the heating and air is the main reason why I started this whole renovation, as I couldn't continue to make videos year-round with the sweltering heat and the chilling cold in the winter. But all that heat and air isn't worth a damn if I can't keep it inside this shop. So let's go take a look at some of the upgrades I made to keep this area climate controlled. First off is the doors, and I've got two exterior rated doors both in the front of the shop and the back of the shop that lead to the non-climate controlled areas. 
Next up, you'll notice a big gap on the front wall of the shop. That's huge. And this is where an insulated roll-up garage door will be installed. This has been on back order for a couple of months, but it's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. And this door is large enough where I could fit a car into my shop if I wanted to, but that's not the purpose of this door. This was made large enough where I could fit larger slabs into the shop if I needed to work on them. It's me again, Brian from the future. Well, it's been a couple of days and I finally got that garage door delivered and it's been installed. Let's take a closer look. If we take a look at the front of the garage door, you can see it's corrugated metal. On the back side of the door, you can see where the insulation is. And as I said before, this is a roll-up garage door, so you can see the spool that the garage door will wrap around. So by pulling up on the bottom of the garage door, you'll see it wrap around that spool. And the other nice thing about this door is it can be locked from the inside. Therefore, I can make sure that all my tools are safe. Now let me send you back to the past. I can't be. Just send you back to the future. Yeah. The next upgrade I made was changing out all the windows. These are double pane Pella windows, and before I had some cheap plastic windows that were only single pane. Now, if you've watched any of my shorts on my renovation updates, you know that I had this entire shop spray insulated. There are a few spaces that are still exposed, so I'll show you those now. If we were to look behind the walls or on the ceiling, this is what you would find. This is two to three inches of spray insulation coating the entire shop. Once the spray insulation was installed, they then put three quarter inch plywood on all the framing. This will be perfect because it's going to give me a lot of meat to bite into once I put my cabinets up. Meat is a big thing in the ketogenic diet. Since I won't be hanging much off the ceilings, I chose to go with drywall. But behind that drywall is the same two to three inches of spray insulation. Next, let's talk about electrical, and I may have gone overboard with a number of outlets in my shop. Every six to seven feet, I have a double outlet on each wall. Not only on the side walls, but also on the front and the back walls. Not only that, but I also chose to have a double outlet on each one of the four support beams that rest in the center of my shop. And this makes a whopping 122 individual plug-in spots inside this shop, which is great because I've been tripping on wires my entire life. But not only that, I also have some 220s installed. Now this one in particular is for my table saw, and I have this one installed fairly low. That way, when I plug in my table saw, the cords won't interfere with my work. But since some of my other tools require a 220, I also have a couple on the wall as well. And that about covers all the electrical. There's one other area I wanna show you that I'm pretty excited about. And that is this little room in the back that's underneath my staircase. This little room will be my office. Now, although it doesn't have any windows, this little spot will be perfect for doing editing and voiceovers. And there's a good chance I may even put a bed in there. So I've got one last surprise about this new shop. And that surprise is a new shop dog. This little girl is named Layla, and she'll be joining me on this woodworking journey. And this little girl is just three months old. Bonus points if you can guess what breed she is. Well, thank you for joining me on this last shop renovation update. As you can see, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Whether it's moving tools back in, rebuilding cabinets and shelves, or covering shop layout, I've got a lot of material to go over in the coming weeks. So join me as we turn this blank canvas into a nice, workable, usable space. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.